Welcome to our last show of the semester day. Today on Sports Roundup, we have wheelchair basketball head coach Lou Schaefer joining us to talk about the upcoming tournaments. Also, we will be chatting to Mary Groth, one of the best volleyball players in SMSU's history for the last time. And as always, Adam Henning will be joining us to give an inside look at the athletic department. I'm your host, Liz Nix, and it's going to be a fun show today, folks, so stick around, because Sports Roundup starts now. Welcome back. I'm Liz Nix, your host, and with me we have head coach wheelchair basketball, Lou Schaefer. Lou, how are you doing today? Good. I'm here. Good. Good. You are uh, coming in just right on time today, a little hustle and bustle, so we're glad you made it. Well, we're I was. I could tell you I was recruiting and all that, but actually I woke up from my nap. No, hey, not, that always works too. That's not true. Oh, oh okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let them to believe you were taking a nap. <laughs> Because then more people would, you know, want to join wheelchair basketball because they think that that's what it's all about, right? No comment. No comment. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about wheelchair basketball. Um, let's see. This was a couple weeks ago, but you were um, in a tournament where you had uh, three games against Texas Arlington and then Edinburgh and then another victory over Edinburgh. Do you want to kind of tell us how that tournament went for you guys? First of all, it's Edinburgh. Oh, excuse me. Okay, Thank of Pennsylvania. Perfect. No, that's okay. Uh, it was it was difficult. The uh, we're not quite as competitive as uh, we would like to be, and so uh, we played two games on Friday night, and uh, we weren't in the ball games. Kids played as well as they could, so it was tough going into Saturday. We had already lost a couple of games. Then we played Texas Arlington, and uh, they are national competitors, and. Uh, they took us uh, down pretty pretty well, so we we went into two games against Edinburgh, and we lost the first one in a tough one. Uh, uh, skill wise, uh, shooting and so forth, as scoring becomes a problem. So we lost the first game. So we lost four in a row. Then the last ball game, and you have to understand, this is five ball games in less than 24 hours. If anyone's ever been in a wheelchair, and even tried to push. Uh, for 24 hours, so uh, the last game was was very difficult in terms of being uh, conditioned, etc. We jumped all over them. Uh, we were up 16 points at halftime, and then it was like someone pulled the band-aid off of our, <laughs> our and all the air went out of us. And with 10 minutes to go, we were only one point uh, up, and you could almost see it on the floor of here we go again. And then. Uh, we called some timeouts, uh, of course, some encouraging words from the coach, uh, but it was the kids. Y you could almost see them just this, no, not this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came down to the last four minutes. We had about a three, four point lead, so they had to foul us. We made six out of seven free throws in the last couple of minutes of the game, uh, which is extraordinary when you think that we were in our fifth game. Uh, arms, fingers, all right, uh, they were they were gone. As a matter of fact, on the way home after we had won the ball game, we made six out of our last seven free throws. We stopped at a Cracker Barrel in Madison, Wisconsin, and I have a young man, Derek Klinkner, who was going to be our starting linebacker in football about three years ago until he had a farm accident. So uh, he's now playing wheelchair basketball. He's my graduate assistant. He could barely eat. 
he was that exhausted. I've, uh, I've been in coaching for years and years, and I don't think I've seen anyone any more exhausted emotionally, physically, uh, than that group of young people. So uh, uh, as a coach, you know, as a teacher, as an educator, uh, it was one of those just, you know why you're in the, in the business. All right, well, we're going to talk a little more about Derek Klinkler and some of the other uh, players on the SMSU wheelchair basketball team right after this break. At Southwest Minnesota State University, our students come first. It's a commitment you can see in our new regional events center, residence hall, student center, and science lab renovation. We've invested over $80 million in the past decade for top-notch facilities. And we're not stopping there. Southwest Minnesota State University, it's where you belong. AmeriCorps Heroes. Kathy sat with frustration looking for a way to make a difference. I want to help people. I want to make a difference. I want to get things done. Then she saw something. Could I be a hero? She had to apply. I should give this a try. A few weeks later, she was accepted into AmeriCorps. I'm an AmeriCorps member now. My service gear. I look sharp. Away she went to training. There she met people who shared her passion. People who wanted to make change. People who joined AmeriCorps. All these people are heroes too. I'm off to serve. They painted houses. They made friends. They prepared for disaster. They served people in need. They cleaned beaches. They helped wild. Together they served. Together they made a difference. Together they were heroes. In AmeriCorps, you can be a hero too. Join AmeriCorps. Welcome back to Sports Roundup. I'm your host, Liz Nix. Here with me, we have head coach of the wheelchair basketball team, Lou Schaefer. And before the break, we were talking about one of your players, um, Derek Klinkler, who did play uh, football here at SMSU. He got in a terrible farming accident, and then um, he was still able to play wheelchair basketball. Now, uh, wheelchair basketball gives the opportunity to some disabled kids to be able to play a sport and to be a part of the team. What does that mean to you when coaching these um, students, these players, and, and helping them to get over a disability in their life? How does that feel for you? You got about eight hours. <laughs> um, well, we got about a couple minutes, so. <laughs> uh, I've been asked that. Uh, I started the program here back in 1969 be, before there was dirt, according to oh, the kids. Oh, we don't want to date ourselves okay. now. Okay. Uh, Teaching and education is teaching and education. And one of the issues that has always been at the forefront is just exact that. And to this day, I'm not sure I can really answer that. I had a, a dear friend who watched one of our practices. He was my division chair. And after practice, he came down and he said, do you really understand the dynamics and so forth that's going on that for an hour and a half to two hours a day people who are quotes unquote disabled aren't they're athletes and here's Lou Shaver yelling and screaming mm -hmm. and whatever and so for an hour and a half to two hours they're athletes and that has always been one of the questions that I've I've, I've wrestled with and I'm, I'm not sure I'll ever know except that coaching is coaching teaching is teaching and the wheelchair just magnifies mm -hmm. all that process but it's the same process uh, in terms of treating the athlete and in terms of their responsibilities and uh, in terms of my responsibilities as, as a coach, as a teacher. So uh, uh, I'm not sure there is any different except that the wheelchair mm -hmm. is involved. I know that um, I myself have a disabled little brother and he grew up um, watching all of us siblings play sports and I know that it hurts him so much that he isn't able to play sports because of his disability but um, when I bring him to wheelchair basketball teams or your games here on campus he just lights up with excitement and and I think it's really the gift that you have as a coach and to see that excitement in these kids um, does that make you keep doing what you're doing? Because you've been coached for a long time now. Don't you feel <laughs> like that? Um, you know, what drives you to keep coaching every year? Uh, it may be a lack of intelligence. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a passion, obviously. It's something that I enjoy doing. Uh, uh, 
obviously I feel like uh, I have some skill that I bring something to that. I've written several books. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take a uh, United States uh, team uh, to international competition over in Ankara, Turkey next September. It's our U23 men's team and I'm the head coach so I'm still involved in it and as long as I guess I feel that I'm still contributing and that uh, that I can in terms of uh, I'll continue to do it uh, by the way what's your dis what's your uh, what's his disability? my brother has a uh, spina bifida at what level? <laughs> um, we'll talk about that a little after the show because, like I said, we okay. don't have four hours this Good week. Good enough. But we'll definitely talk about that after the show. We only have a couple minutes left, so let's talk about what's coming up. You have some very busy weekends these next two weekends. Do you want to just tell us a little about where you're going and who you have to face? Sure. We are finishing this semester down at Lincoln, Nebraska this, this coming weekend. We will play five games in a little uh, tournament down there. Uh, hosted by, uh, there's a huge uh, rehabilitation center down there, Madonna, mm -hmm. and we'll play five games against community teams. They won't be intercollegiate teams. And then we go down to Pittsburgh State, which is in Kansas, Pittsburgh, Kansas, and we play in another tournament the following week against, again, community teams. And uh, I think I think we're looking at this that uh, we have 10 games finishing up that will be competitive. Uh, we we just won't be dominated as we have been in a couple of the uh, intercollegiate games. So, uh, looking forward to it. All right, sounds good, and we wish you good luck. And we want to thank Lou Schaefer for joining us today. We're going to take a quick break, but then we'll be right back with some more sports roundup. Alone, our reach is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary, humanity in motion. There are moments in your life when you think about what defines you. Mine was the moment when the doctor said autism. What do you do next? There is no cure. There is no game plan. Can you tell me what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing? Because I don't know. As a parent, you're expected to have all the answers. But when your child has autism, there are very few answers to be had. That's why tens of thousands of parents across the country have come together online to give researchers the insight they need. It's called the EM Project. Every child is different, and unless we, as parents, Tell the researchers what is specific to our child. How will they know? They don't live with the children. They don't see them every day. This is one thing that I can contribute. I can contribute to the answer. Join the Ian Project. We all have questions. Together, we'll find the answers. Southwest Minnesota State University, where private school atmosphere meets public school cost. Programs like Colonology, Agronomy, and Environmental Science set the standard nationwide. Where grad placement rates are over 97%. And the school invests in you, putting over $80 million back into the university. Southwest Minnesota State University, where you belong. Hello and welcome back to Sports Roundup. I'm Liz Mix, your host, and this is Mary Growth. I mean, she... Her playing speaks for herself, one of the best players in SMSU's history of volleyball. And Mary, thank you so much for joining us on the show here. No problem. Um, you had a busy weekend. You finished up your tournament over in St. Paul. Um, you started off with the win against um, Truman. Was, no, yep, Truman. Truman State. And then you lost against Nebraska Kearney. Can you just describe a little bit of how the tournament went for you guys? Um, well, first of all, Truman, we played well, and they played well, but we obviously pulled out ahead, so that was exciting. And then going into the Kearney match, uh, two years ago, we actually played them in the semifinals as well when we held regionals here, and we lost to them. So it was kind of like a big rivalry, like, ooh, this is the time, our time to shine and time to get after it. But um, they played a great match, and we struggled in different areas, and it showed, and unfortunately, we... Lost the bet on that one. 
All right. And how was how was being in that tournament? First of all, um, just just being in the tournament, it, it was an honor to begin with. But as you being in your last years in your last tournament, how did that feel for you? I mean, obviously, getting in a tournament is a big deal because it's not easy getting in there. But as my last tournament, I was just like, hey, let's lay it all out on the line, hold nothing back, and let's get after it. All right, and um, you have some great achievements on uh, behind your name. You were the um, ABCA All-American team for the third time in your career, um, along with Devin Dietrich. She was it's her third time, I believe, too. Um, uh, all these awards and all, all this all tournaments teams does that does that help you to play better when you were playing volleyball or was it just one of those things oh that's cool but I'm gonna focus on the next game the next opponent um, I have to go I that stuff is just all extra I mean it's all great and wonderful I never expect to get any of it so it's always a bonus but yeah I always focus on just keep getting better don't like get the fame and whatnot I'll get to your head and just keep going plugging away and another one of your stats you uh, were uh, you're finished in your career fourth all-time in kills and when uh, when you made that 1,000 kill mark earlier this season uh, was that was that an, a goal that you were gonna set out for at the beginning of your senior season was that something that you wanted to reach I honestly didn't know how close I was to a thousand kills so when I got it I was like oh cool <laughs> I was like <laughs> I honestly had no idea where I was on the kill board at all so it was just kind of like before an extra bonus all right and you did finish with 1612 kills which like I mentioned is fourth all-time on SMSU's history and um, just sum up what it's been like for you to play as a Mustang here on the campus of Southwest for for all your your career how what did the, how that make you feel just tell us a little bit of I mean coming in as a freshman I had no idea what my potential would be but Terry and the coaches and my teammates they pushed me to be a better person and a better player I mean just working every day and getting after it and being focused and getting after it in practice and games and I mean it's just been wonderful it's just a wonderful family here and I wouldn't have traded it for anything all right, and um, you, as a team, you guys did a lot this year. You um, finished 30 and three overall, which is a great record, um, including um, your first regular season Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference title since 2001. To be able to win that title um, with this team and with your head coach as Terry Culhane, um, was that something that you were you, you were guys were doing for yourselves, or were you doing it for Terry, or or what was your mindset when you were in that championship? Game. I mean, going, I mean, playing Concordia anytime is always fun because they're a good team and we're a good team, so it's just a battle of the best pretty much. But going in, it's like saying, like, hey, here's our chance to prove to everybody what we're about, and we did. So. All right, and other things, um, you captured the 2012 NSIC versus NUS Bank Tournament Championship. Um, you, like you said, you defeated Concordia St. Paul. Um, you received your ninth consecutive NCAA appearance um, with the win, and it's tenth in the school history. And also, um, you, just so many achievements you have achieved over this years. Now, stepping back and being done for volleyball, um, how would you sum up your career? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I loved every minute of it, but like, there are points where I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Like, this is too hard for me. But. I'm so glad that I pushed through, and looking back, it's just been awesome. I went, I loved it. So going back a little bit into the past, um, when you went to school in Wisconsin, what mm -hmm. made you choose Marshall, Minnesota, Southwest? Um, well, it was during club season in the Northern Lights in the cities is when Terry first saw me, my junior year of high school. So that's when he first contact, contacted me about coming to Southwest, so it just all, escalated from there and first went on a visit and I fell in love with the coaches and the players. I thought everybody here was so friendly. It was like a big happy family. And so I chose it and came here. All right, now what's next for Mary Growth? What are you doing? What are you moving on to? What's in your future? <laughs> Honestly, it's one big question mark. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, going to school for biology, so hopefully something science related, farming related, but 
I have to come back for another semester, so hopefully that extra semester will give me more time to figure out what I want to do. <laughs> All right, so you'll be graduating in May? Um, I'll walk in May, but I'll come back for another semester All in right, fall. all right, and um, is there like, you know, you, you mentioned a little bit something with biology and possibly farming. Is there mm -hmm. like a dream job that you would that you would want or you're trying to set out to achieve? Or? Anything with horses. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> so, I honestly have no idea. Possibly vet school? Is that I've something? thought about it. People have mentioned it to me, but maybe last resort? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Do more years of schooling? I, I don't know if you can handle it. I know. More I, school? I don't, I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and now, bringing back, we haven't brought this back in a while, so we're going to bring it back. We have our Pulse game cool down, and we're going to get inside Mary Gross' head. And this is Christmas style. So um, we're going to ask you a couple of Christmas um, questions. So first of all, what's your favorite Christmas song? Um, I'd have to say Let It Snow, because I love the snow. Well, we haven't seen any snow yet. Here. I know. It's very disappointing. Um, well, what, back home, do you guys have snow? Uh, no, not at home. But That's kind of disappointing. No I know. Snow it is sad. It is very <laughs> sad. All right. Favorite Christmas movie? Um, probably Charlie Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown Christmas? Yeah. All right. And then do you watch a lot of Christmas movies on TV? A few. And then, okay, what is the best Christmas movie channel? Hallmark, Lifetime, or ABC Family? Um, ABC Family. ABC Family? Yeah. All right. You heard it here. ABC family lover. <laughs> All right, favorite Christmas memory? Um, I'd say with me and all my siblings, we go running around in the snow in our bare feet. We have like races around in the snow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how many siblings do you have? I have two younger brothers and a younger sister. All right, and did you guys get sick a lot? Nope, not at all. <laughs> wow, so that's the secret is just to <laughs> yeah. run around outside in the snow and you won't get sick. Exactly. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I'll keep that. Okay, and now finally, what is the top gift you want for Christmas on your Christmas list? Ooh, I'd have to say, ooh, I don't know, a new CD of some sort, maybe like Jason Aldean's CD. All right, country music then? Yes, awesome. hardcore. All the way? Mm hmm Yes. Nothing See? but country music. We're sisters from another mother. Yep. Both country music <laughs> lovers. All right. Thank you so much, Mary Growth, for yes, being on no the problem. show. Um, when we're coming up next, we'll have Adam Henning on Sports Roundup. Alone, our reach is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion. There are moments in your life when you think about what defines you. Mine was the moment when the doctor said autism. What do you do next? There is no cure. There is no game plan. Can you tell me what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing? Because I don't know. As a parent, you're expected to have all the answers. But when your child has autism, there are very few answers to be had. That's why tens of thousands of parents across the country have come together online to give researchers the insight they need. It's called the Ian Project. Every child is different, and unless we, as parents, tell the researchers what is specific to our child, how will they know? They don't live with the children. They don't see them every day. This is one thing that I can contribute. I can contribute to the answer. Join the Ian Project. We all have questions. Together, we'll find the answers. Hello and welcome back to Sports Roundup. I have with me Adam Henning. Adam, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Okay, you are going to let us know what's going on in women's and men's basketball. Let's start off with the men's. Men's basketball, first home game, um, uh, Northern Sun Conference game um, this past Saturday. We hosted uh, the University of Sioux Falls and we were victorious. Got off to a little slow start there in the first half. Um, Sioux Falls brought it to us pretty pretty good, um, but we pulled away in the second half and uh, ended up with a 10-point victory. So it was a good, good start to the conference um, schedule for the, the, the men's team. Um, they'll be on the road this, this weekend, so hopefully they continue the, their winning ways. All right, so moving over to the women's basketball team, what do you got there for us? Um, they didn't fare as, uh, as well as the men, but they played a lot better um, in their first conference game versus Sioux Falls. It was their um, Sioux Falls men's and women's first conference game in the Northern Sun. 
Um, so it was interesting to see what they'd bring to the table, but uh, they stuck it to us. Um, both teams had some good runs. Um, I think the I think we were down about 15 or 16 with a couple minutes to go, and the girls kept fighting and uh, got a 12-2 run and um, cut, uh, cut the lead down to five, actually, and then uh, ended up losing by 11. So the final score was 77-66. Um, so they're one and five on the season. All right. And this past weekend, it was uh, whiteout. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain a little bit about how that came to be or what whiteout is all about? Um, the Mustang Maniacs, it's a, a, a student club that's uh, formed by the traditions on campus. Um, they have a different theme night um, every, every home game, so this was our first uh, theme night, and Whiteout was um, the theme, so um, go online and check out what uh, the future up, uh, dates are um, and participate. There's a lot of fun dates coming up, so um, we'll have splash, splash pages on the website for you guys to check out and be informed and always... Um, check out Twitter, SMSU Mustangs um, on Twitter too. So, All right, so it was a pretty good weekend for the Mustangs. And like you mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, men's plays this weekend. Yep, men and women travel to um, Augustana on Friday in Sioux Falls, and then they go to Wayne State in Nebraska on Saturday. All right. Well, we are going to take a 30-second break, and then um, we'll be right back with some more with Ann and Henning. You're watching Sports Roundup. Alone, our reach is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary, humanity in motion. Welcome back to uh, SMSU Sports Roundup. I'm Liz Nix. With me, we have Adam Henning. And Adam, is there anything going on in the athletic department? Any big events that are coming up soon that you can let us know? Um, wrestling's first home match, home duel, is Wednesday. So be sure to check that out um, in the PE gym at 7 p.m. They will welcome Morningside College. They are also the Mustang, so it'll be Battle of the Mustangs on Wednesday. So check that out. Um, got a pretty good team this year, so excited for that. Um, Gearing up for that, we've got a, a special project going on. Um, it's a video PSA. Um, it's a drunk driving. It's in a correlation with uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. So we're kind of working on that. And that'll be um, displayed hopefully sometime um, this basketball season. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Well, uh, you know, you mentioned something last time, mm -hmm. and you're kind of heartbroken about it, so I decided that I was going to uh, bring it back and okay. um, let you participate in the post-game cool-down, Christmas Yikes. style. However, we're going to make it a little more difficult. You cannot repeat any of the answers that Mary Groth has said. Uh, I wanted to Jason Aldean see if uh, I Sorry, that. not <laughs> happening, so you gotta, you got to come up with another one. So, first of all, favorite Christmas song? That was a tough one. I was thinking of that, and I couldn't really pin one down. I like uh, instrumental. Um, song. So, so you're like uh, the Manhattan Steamrollers kind yeah, of? Yeah, just flip that on and we always, as a, as a kid, we always put that on the, the speakers and then hung up Christmas decorations. So I don't have a particular favorite. So. How adorable. All right, favorite Christmas movie? <laughs> Jingle All the Way. Wow, really? By far. Yeah, <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> Home Alone's good too. Well then, well then, go on the old school classics. Yeah. Sheesh. Favorite Christmas me memory? Ah, favorite Christmas memory. Um, I don't know. It's a tough one. Um, probably when I was like 14, I got a guitar that I never play. Wow. <laughs> Still don't know how to play, but you know, somehow it's my favorite Mom, memory. Mom, if you're so. watching, don't get him something that he's never going to use again. Oops. Just saying. <laughs> and finally, what is the top gift you want for Christmas this year? Um, I'd have to go with an iPad. Don't really need it, but. Would love it. Would love it. Do you want the Would regular size ones or the minis? I think the minis are pointless. Gotta oh. Go, go big or go home. So, Mom, there if you're go. watching, give me an iPad. You heard it from uh, Adam right there. Go big or go home. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for joining us today on our last show. Also, thank you to head coach Lou Schaefer and um, one of the best SMSU volleyball players at here at the college, Mary Groth. Um, we are done. This is our last show for the semester. Thank you so much for joining us all semester long. We'll be back next semester with some more sports roundup. Have a great day, everybody.